Think twice before relying on supply and demand. Perhaps the dumbest thing by far Australian businesses have done is to create within the community an addiction to sales and discounting. There is always an expectation that the next sale is just around the corner. This addiction to discounting has been very effective in reducing profitability and indeed the viability of many businesses. A recent example of this moronic obsession with discounting and indeed this lazy obsession with discounting has been the adoption of the US concept of the Black Friday sales. Not only have the Black Friday sales encouraged more discounting, driving margins down still further, but they have damaged the Boxing Day sales and further entrenched the consumer view that the next sale is just around the corner. Why would a consumer ever buy at full price? One of the reasons for this is the intuitive belief by many business people, and indeed many smart marketers, that lower prices are the main driver of sales in Australia. To the extent that this is true, it is a demonstration of lazy marketing. Indeed, the belief that price is all important is further evidence of the stupidity of relying on intuition without data. Another reason for the obsession with discounting is the blind faith in the principles of supply and demand. Indeed, the laws of supply and demand suggest that the higher the price of a product, the lower the demand for the product. But is this necessarily true? When rebranding Olay in the 1990s, Procter & Gamble tested three price points, $12.99, $15.99 and $18.99. The test indicated that Olay would generate more unit sales at the higher $18.99 price point. Subsequent sales supported these test results. This is just one of many cases where a higher price actually increased demand or unit sales. It is findings like this that encourage one-time classical economist Richard Thaler and many others to question the reliability of traditional economics in predicting consumer behaviour. The fact is in addition to being a measure of value, price is also used by consumers as a guide to quality. If I told you that these jewels cost $300, you would assume they are paste and that they are essentially junk. Equally, however, if I told you that these jewels were priced at $3 million, most would assume that they are expensive jewels and that they cannot afford them. Knowing little about this jewellery, most people would simply use price to inform the conclusion that these are diamonds, that they are of high quality, and that they are beyond the reach of the consumer concerned. Believe it or not, repeated studies have demonstrated that even informed palates struggle to tell the difference between good wine and bad, at least without a label to read. Research has consistently demonstrated that consumers judge the quality of a wine and indeed tend to buy wine based on price. The higher the price, the better the rating of the wine. In one study, wine lovers were asked to rate two red wines out of six. With the first wine, they were first told that it was a $5 wine and they rated it 2.25 out of 6. They were then given the first wine again in different packaging and told that it was a $45 wine and it received a rating of 3.5 out of 6. With the second wine, consumers were first told that it was a $10 wine and it received a rating of 2.5 out of 6. When told, however, that the same wine in different packaging was a $90 wine, it received a rating of 4.1 out of 6. Price drove the perception of quality and therefore the rating 
of the wine. Great marketers in 2022 are questioning the addiction that Australian businesses have to discounting. Great marketers in 2022 avoid a reliance on intuition and the laws of supply and demand. Great marketers in 2022 know how and when to use price as a tool to drive the perception of quality and margins. The insights? Well, firstly, the intuition that lower prices will increase unit sales is flawed. Beware of relying on intuition. Secondly, the laws of supply and demand do not apply as well as many people think. Beware of classical or traditional economics. And thirdly, price is as much a perceived measure of quality as it is a factor impacting on the perception of value. Questions to ponder. With the right strategies in place, how much more could you increase the price of your products without diminishing sales? And indeed, what might an increase in price increase unit sales? Secondly, what are your expectations of your customers and potential customers? What is the worth to them of getting exactly what they want? And would they pay a premium for it? And thirdly, which product categorization might best drive the perception that your product offers superior value and should attract a premium price? To find out more, visit www.djohncarlsonesq.com. That's www.djohncarlsonesq.com. Or email me, John C. at djohncarlsonesq.com. That's John C. at djohncarlsonesq.com. I'm John Carlson. Thanks for listening. Thank you.